Gotham and I are going to be talking about uh, a school in Charlotte. Uh, the Charlotte Mecl Mecklenburg Schools is uh, fairly advanced in what they require for um, for their their BIM uh, workflows. And one of those things is uh, having clashes. You know, they do require clash reports to happen. I think we got them out of like an actual report and. Gotham maybe can go into a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to go uh, back a little bit before, um, as most of you know, Autodesk has given us access now. As long as you have a design license, you also have uh, BIM 360 um, model coordination available. And so we are just getting into it on, on our side. Um, and so I was happy that Gotham wanted to take it a little bit further after I was talking about the model coordination piece. And our MEP engineer actually does a lot of this as well. Um, and so they kind of pushed us into a direction of needing to, uh, needing to figure a few things out. So going back to the very beginning, <laughs> how to get uh, the views that Scott was showing um, is through this publish settings on your, um, Sorry, the little, I want that to go away. Um, so under, nope, publish settings here. You just want to, uh, for us, he, uh, our engineer had already created all of the MEP views that I'll show you in a moment in his file. And then we already had a Navisworks coordination view that we typically set up for our projects uh, because on the design side, um, we are in design right now. On the design side, we do do Navisource coordination typically. Now that we've seen the model coordination, um, it's probably gonna be enough for us on the design side um, to get us by. We know that Navisworks does many more things, but it's also for me, harder. <laughs> and I don't like the look of it necessarily. So just the beauty of uh, the views within um, model coordination space on BIM 360, uh, the BIM 360 cloud is much better. Um, so you just select uh, the view that you wanna have. I highly recommend, this one is just named export. I highly recommend that you do some nice naming conventions for these views if you have multiple ones like level naming. Get everybody on the same page. It just helps out when you're trying to, when you're getting into uh, the model space. Um, so then uh, once that's selected, you do have to go ahead and publish uh, publish publish that model in order for it to uh, come up on BIM 360. Um, so here I'm here I am in our model coordination space. I don't know why this make it go away. The little uh, the navigation thing is just is like overrunning, and I don't know how to make it go away right now. So this is this is what we're gonna do. Um, so this is where the model coordination. Hopefully, uh, people realize that I do Autodesk. I think these should be reversed. Uh, just you know, putting that out there. Um, so the model coordination tab. I'm gonna click over here. Uh, this is that same portion that Scott was talking about. Um, so you can see here, just as Scott said, uh, our engineer did divide everything up by level. Um, I've gone ahead and selected some of these and I have those open over here. Um, so just uh, certain models we can start to, to look at. Um, you can see we have a, we have our, uh, a different model, not in the right place. So that's that's cool. I have to go in and check what's happening with my view on that one. Uh, I think it's the structural one, actually. I selected the wrong file, so we won't get any structural uh, coordination on that. Um, so here's uh, here's the the model as it's seeing things. So I just did that first level, um, and I like the navigating navigation part within here. Um, I will say, I think I like the, the group by type name a little bit better, but you have to make sure that um, your type names are something that are understandable. So if I move this one to architecture and then I have all of the other models, you're gonna start to see like, we're pretty good with our type names uh, on the architecture side, uh, but then we get into 12 feet, that's a cool type name. Don't know what that is. Um, 
of course, I know what all these are, so I can easily uh, try and clash. Again, there's our, uh, these are like our athletic field models in the wrong place. Um, but you can come in here and start to see, uh, you know, uh, all the walls that are, uh, you know, causing issues with some of the ductwork. We don't necessarily care, um, but it's a pretty quick way to, uh, to get to where we need to be. Um, so that's, I, we haven't started to get too much into this portion. Our MEP engineer is doing all that, but we will be shortly on ratio side. But I really wanted to, hand, I want to get Gotham on the line so he can talk about what he's doing on the Navisworks side within uh, BIM 360 uh, to help run meetings and, and create issues. So I'm going to stop share and hand it over to him. All right, I'm going to push my screen here. Okay, so uh, as Heather mentioned, CMS, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools has a pretty robust uh, BIM standard. Some of it doesn't make a ton of sense. They ask for a <laughs> clash detection log, which has fields for at a minimum clash number, clash location, column line intersection, uh, trades involved, recommended solution. And they want you to do that for every clash, which could be thousands. So. I said, gosh, guys, can we do this another way? And eventually we got them to what we're doing now. And uh, first of all, I do want to tip my hat to Scott for, for acknowledging that Navisworks is great and, and uh, the cloud doesn't re uh, replace it. <laughs> we love Navisworks. I, again, I'm a general contractor. I'm a VDC manager. And we use Navisworks primarily for uh, coordination with subcontractors. And we get down to three quarters of an inch or less. We're, we get really tight. And we need the flexibility and the navigability of Navisworks, being able to section all day long and move stuff around, measure between things. It's just great. We love it. Uh, so normally what we're doing now is not uh, coordination, it's design review. So this is where I work with designers and, and we look at bigger stuff, right? Here's some big things we think are gonna cause problems down the road. Uh, so how can we get the design to help feed into our coordination and construction process. And uh, we started around 50% DD usually. And uh, what I've done in the past is I go into Navisworks, I, I look through the models, I say, gosh, I don't like this. I'll create a viewpoint for it, as you can see over here. I number those viewpoints. I create meeting minutes. We discuss the viewpoints. I take notes on each one. After the meeting, I send them the NWD and the meeting minutes, and then they go work on it. So uh, that's what I've done in the past. It works fairly well. Uh, now, what we were doing with ratio is we said, well, let's put that NWD somewhere easier to find. You know, We're already on the cloud, so why don't we just put it on the cloud? And all credit to Autodesk on this because we very quickly hit upon a way to take how I usually do things with my team and how the designers work and we were able to kind of click it all together and it works really well. Yeah. So what we did is we have a folder here for Navisworks and I go up there and I post an NWD. I put the date on it and they can go and look at old NWDs. We have a chronicle of our design review process right here. Uh, then in a meeting, I'll open up the NWD that we're talking about. This is a meeting from two days ago. I'll open up the Navisworks model in the background because that's how I like to actually discuss things. And I'll say, all right, guys, uh, this is our model. These are our views. All the viewpoints come right over, which is great. So I'm going to go to this folder, which was dated two, day two days ago, and let's talk about issue number 11. So I go to this spot in the model on the cloud. We might talk about it a little bit. If I don't like how... And I mean, you can move stuff in here. It's great. But for me, Navisworks is just how I'm used to looking at things. So here I could section, I can walk down hallways. It's just faster for me. I'm used to it. So I can say, I may go back to Navisworks for the discussion purposes. Then I'll say, all right, guys, how do we want to handle this? And they'll say, you know what? Let's create an issue. And let's assign that issue to person number X. I'll say, awesome. I'll click on the issues tab, create issue. It asks you to click a location. That's easy. It's easy to miss this right here. You got to remember to click a location to give it an actual place to go. 
And now I've got a, uh, an issue created here. I put a title on it, assign it to somebody. You know, I can assign it to Heather. D add any other details I want here and hit create. And so now they have this list here, right? And you'll see we've already started working through some stuff, but it's been great because I've been able to take what, again, I take what I do and how I like to do things with my team, our internal process, and I can put it up on the cloud. And now all their issues, whether it's something we created in a design review meeting or an issue they've created on their own or issues that Heather's come up with, they're all in the same place for them to look at. So, uh, and again, we hit on this. It, it took us less than an hour, right, Heather? Yeah. To figure this out and start implementing this. Yeah. And so now this is just the way we do it. I don't have meeting minutes that I have to send them because all they have to do is look at their list of issues, yeah. right? They can go to an issue. They can go to the activity. They can add comments, whatever it is. They can close out issues. And suddenly there's less documentation, fewer places for them to go for the information. And yeah. it's, it's worked great. Yeah. And I think the like at least on our side for our users that have to come in to this like for me like I've also like I've been using Atmosworks but I still like I'm not using it every day so it's for me it's still hard to navigate and to expect that your team um, you know that an interior designer uh, you know a second year architect is going to be able to get into Navisworks and go in and like see things that's a little that's a little bit much, but when we send them into uh, to this file, it's really easy to locate things. It's easy to spin the model around and you know move things up and down so that you can see like all the implications within a uh, ceiling plenum. So for me, that part's been uh, fantastic. Uh, just being being able to to show more people what they were, you know, well, what they're no capable one. of. No one wants to learn another ribbon, you know, like if they have, to, if they don't have to deal with another ribbon interface in their life, they're going to be happy is the way I look at it as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is all their issues, not just the ones we've created, but everything that's come up that we've created around. And so they can click on it here and get to it. And yeah. uh, I guess the one thing I'll, I'll tag onto what Scott was saying is how in Navis works, there's no way to push those issues from Navis back into the cloud. Well, this is how we're doing it with the viewpoints. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and again, because it's a design review, we're not going through every single fine tooth comb issue. We're hitting 15 or 20 in a meeting. And uh, now we're going from Navisworks up to the cloud. And yep. Or I should clarify, we can, we can create issues in Navisworks that push up, but if you run your clashes in Navis, you can't push your clashes up. That makes sense. I may have said yep. that too quick earlier. Yeah. And there, there is a lot of, if you're just getting into this, uh, there is a lot of like permissions and different things on the back end that you have to set up correctly. When we were first running through this, like uh, the MEP engineers, they couldn't see any of the issues that we were making because we hadn't opened, you know, we didn't have it set correctly for them to be able to see things. Um, and if you are on the design side, consider with like organizing your issues. Um, when we were talking to, to Autodesk about some of this stuff, um, you know, there are metrics that you can start to put in place. Some of those metrics I don't feel like make sense during schematic design and design development. Um, maybe into CDs, uh, you know, that you can start to see that your project teams are always having a problem with the cable trays, uh, running into duct, you know, running into duct work. Um, so you can start to see uh, some of those things happen. And that's in the insight part. Maybe we'll get into that into a future, in a future session. But again, if you're just getting started on this, all those permissions on the back end, um, there's just a lot to go through to make sure that people see the right thing. I just ended up opening all the issues up to everybody. Um, you can filter them pretty easy, um, go from there. Like we do have one question in terms of how you're bringing in the specialties and aggregating the fabrication models with the design models. Are you keeping the design and build coordination processes separate? Thank you, Dan. Wonderful question. So that's something we've talked about internally in my team is whether we want to put the designers on the cloud. Now we have, I have coordinated with the designers in Glue and they love it. It works great. Uh, 
not all of our, we're actually just starting up a project now in a different region and not all of our subcontractor modelers have collaborate pro, which Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but if they're going to model and push out on the cloud, they would need that collaborate pro license, right? That's correct. So yeah. what pro essentially does is it enables cloud work sharing. Yeah. So, so right now we're still with subcontractors using primarily Navisworks out of the cloud. Uh, glue being the exception. They could save the models there. They just couldn't do work sharing through there. Yeah. But most of, I mean, you're going to have multiple people on a job. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that aren't doing model coordination at all, like just starting off um, or class detection at all, just starting off in the model coordination space on BIM 360, I think is a great start if you're a design team because <laughs> um, it does give you that high level oh look at all these ducks that are under you know under my ceiling like it's a high level nice pretty pictures which we all like um, do all the work all the work with cloud models I don't know if I understand Dan's question Dan's asking do all workflows discussed also work work with cloud models So uh, when I have models on the cloud, if I'm running it through oh, Navisworks, I actually, I just pull them down from the cloud and, and export my NWC. So that's what I've, yeah. so yeah, it does. And there it, are actually ways to auto generate NWCs and push them out to like a shared uh, Autodesk desktop. I have seen um, some, I have seen some issues with non-work shared enabled models, not like we can't link them into uh, our models. So, but I haven't really, I haven't tested if they, if you'd be able to do any kind of coordination with them. So it's a good question. 